Hi, I'm Jeff Teeter. I'm a systems engineer with the America Partners Organization. Today we'll be going over Lab 1 of the Cisco Open SDN Controller Hands-On Labs. Specifically, we'll be verifying the network connectivity and installing the Open SDN Controller. So we'll be actually starting with uh, Lab 1, Task 2. The first task is basically just getting connectivity to the lab, and uh, we already have that. Uh, so the first thing that uh, we'll actually be doing here is opening up some PuTTY connections to our routers and just verifying basic connectivity. Uh, so the first router that we're going to connect to is the iOS XRV1. And what we'll do is first go ahead and verify uh, the ISIS adjacency and make sure that uh, router 1 has connections uh, to two routers, uh, routers 2 and 4. And it looks like it's uh, those routers are up and has connectivity. We're going to go ahead and uh, check the BGP sum and make sure that uh, router 1 has three uh, connections uh, to uh, the basically the route reflector clients and each one of them is sending uh, two prefixes and so that's uh, basically what we want and uh, from this one we can also see that we we are obviously uh, able to connect to uh, the BGP loopback addresses since this one's connected to all of them uh, the 172.16.1.200 neighbor is the open SDN controller at uh, on this side we do have it uh, configured but uh, of course we still have to actually install the open SDN controller and then in a later lab uh, actually do the um, route reflector client configuration so that that'll be a, a follow-up lab uh, so let's go ahead and go to another router and, and uh, open up another uh, putty connection telnet connection let's go to router 2 And again, just uh, verify the uh, ISIS adjacency. Again, this should have two connections. Now this one will be a little bit different as far as verifying the uh, BGP. There should only be one peer connection, which is to the route reflector. But you should, uh, this router should be getting uh, six prefixes, which it is, from the route reflector. Um, and then let's go ahead and actually make sure that we can reach the other two routers by just pinging the loopback addresses of router 3 and router 4. And router 2 is able to reach that. And then let's ping router 4. And so it looks like router 2 has full connectivity. So let's uh, go ahead and connect to the, connect to the next router which is OS XRV3. So we'll check the ISIS uh, adjacency. Again, this router is connected to two routers, two and four. Everything looks fine. And we should make sure that uh, receiving all our routes from our route reflector, and we are. We're connecting and uh, getting six routes. And then let's go ahead and uh, ping uh, the other two routers uh, that we don't have any connectivity to here, uh, at least as far as BGP. Uh, that would be uh, routers 2 and 3, or I'm sorry, 2 and 4. So there's 2 and there's 4. So everything looks good there. So I'll go ahead and go to router 4 real quick. And again, take a look at the ISIS adjacency. Make sure we have two links, which we do. Look at BGP, and we're getting the six prefixes. And let's just go ahead and ping router two and three. 
Uh, looks like we can reach two and and three. So it looks like we have full connectivity as far as uh, the routers go, uh, which is a good thing. So uh, basically the next step, task three, is to actually install the OpenSDN controller. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and bring up the Chrome browser here. And let's go to the address of the VM, which is 172.16.1.200. And what it should do is go ahead and validate that the VM is ready to go. And at this point we can choose to either have a one member cluster or we can automatically go ahead and have a three member cluster. If we do that obviously we need to bring in uh, additional IP addresses. Uh, or host names for those, but we're going to go ahead and stick with just one, and so we're going to go ahead and hit submit cluster configuration. Now this process uh, usually takes a few minutes. It it really depends on uh, the infrastructure that you're installing it in. This is a, a lab environment, so it takes a little bit longer than normal. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, finish this lab uh, recording and uh, at the start of lab two we'll go ahead and basically uh, start where we uh, left off here basically the configuration um, should go ahead and complete and then we just go ahead and uh, give a new password uh, for the username and then start directly into lab two so that's where we'll go ahead and, and start uh, with lab two I hope you uh, continue to watch uh, the labs and uh, should be getting uh, some really good information very soon. Thank you.